Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for the one and only World Improv Network comedy show on Mile High Sports Radio. Take part in the show by giving your suggestions or questions to the cast for each show segment throughout the week or live during the show by hitting them up on Facebook at World Improv Network, on Twitter at World Improv Net, or by calling in to Mile High Sports Radio studio line. Now, enjoy the show. <laughs> It's local. It's global. You're listening to Win World Local News. Win World Local News on Mile High Sports Radio. I'm Potter Smith. Breaking news into the Win World Local News sports desk from Win Sports reporter Kangaroo Andy, who's live at the International Beer Chugging Championships in Dublin, Ireland, where several finalists have passed out of the competition due to mug malfunction? What's going on and what's the scene looking like over there, kangaroo? Crikey, Potter. There's a lot of beer on the bar here. I'll tell you what, it's quite a competition out here. We have representing every single country in the entire world and even one moon planet, a Jupiter moon. We cannot quite understand what the life is and it is drinking at an extremely quick rate. There has been a lot of problems here. People are having quite a difficult time drinking all of the beer. I can't imagine what the problem is, other than the fact that they've dyed each and every beer to the flag colors of each and every country. So it appears that every single one of the contestants is having a little bit of, uh, let's just say, stomach intestinal problems here, Potter. <laughs> Crikey! It's gonna be an emergency pretty soon. Bring the mops, bring the buckets, and bring a lot of janitorial staff, because it's gonna get real, real messy, and it's not gonna be burps that are coming out nasty. I'll tell you what it's gonna be, Potter. It's gonna be a whole big steaming pile of terrible... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, it, I got to get out of here. It's, I'm, a, I'm about to be sick, but I got to go. <laughs> but, <laughs> wow, kangaroo. I hope you make it out there okay. And that sounds like one hell of a competition. Well, our next major story is brought to us by wind contributor Janine of Houston, Texas. This year's holiday sensation, Elf on the Shelf has many conspiracy theorists asserting that the new fad figurine is actually a high-tech governmental surveillance device to spy on citizens. To deck the halls with insight and to shine a bright red nose on the truth, let's go live to win senior surveillance reporter Edward Snowball, who's in Santa's workshop at the Russian North Pole. Edward! Bruh, that's right, I'm... Here in the midst of uh, this technology being manufactured, put together diligently with uh, handcrafted labor in a pristine environment. I mean, they don't take uh, the security for this technology lightly, no sir. And I'm actually here with head elf engineer. This is, I, b I believe it's Mibble, Mibble Arkovsky. Uh, Mibbles is right, that's my name. All right, Mibbles, well, how long have you been producing these little elves on show? 427 years. I'm proud to say I'm the longest working elf in this elf shelf factory. That would seem to make elves uh, the longest, uh, the longest lasting uh, set of spies the world has ever known. That's right. That's right. Nobody's ever known that I was undercover. And what is... Uh, Perhaps today you could share one of the biggest secrets in the past 400 plus years. Well, if I'm gonna be honest with you, it's terribly hot here in the North Pole. It's like 98 degrees all the time. People just never come out and visit us, so they never know how cold it actually is. It's, uh, it's pretty hot. <laughs> Nibbles, <laughs> who are you talking to over there? Uh, no, nobody, nobody, just, uh, just the TV over here. Hey, hey, you may have done me fooling around over there. Make sure to continue to make them move. No, 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 nothing, nothing. Here, yeah, report them in. You gotta take this. This is the magic dust. It makes the sleigh go boom, boom. Get it out of oh, here before uh, they find it on me. All right, all right. I have to engage in some spy tactics myself. Not that I was ever trained in oh, them. Do nothing. Get all you got your dirty hands off of me. Well, there you have it. This is a very strict working environment. Uh... Perhaps if there was some kind of labor party involved in the politics at the North Pole, uh, if there was some kind of union or representation, you know, the political scheme here is 
something spectacular. I'll tell you what. Oh. Hey, what's what going is... on? Oh, uh, 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 I'm. I'm, uh. My name is Spoon, the elf. I, uh, work here. All right, well, uh, looks like, uh, the situation's getting hairy here. Uh, Potter, back to you. Well, that sounds like a chaotic work environment. I hope they have some decent labor laws up there. 98 degrees at the North Pole? Oh, my God. All right, well, moving on to another story of great significance. Brought to us by wind contributor oh, Phil of Monument, Colorado. A silverback gorilla named Puffins escaped from the Brooklyn Zoo after a troubled superstar actor Charlie Sheen attempted to solicit the great ape for inappropriate, illegal, extracurricular activities. To peel back the banana of the story, as well as to find out what has become of poor little Puffins, let's go live to win animal psychologist Dr. Diane Fossil, who is in a Brooklyn trap house with the distraught great ape. Diane! Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. I, I'm, I'm very sorry, Potter. I'm just finishing an etouffee right now. Uh, yes, it is quite a scene here. Uh, the, the silverback gorilla is, as you know, one of the strongest beasts in the animal kingdom, and many people fear it, but one who has not ever feared the silverback is one Charlie Sheen, who snuck in just last week in an attempt to steal the silverback silver stripe. He believed that if he had the silver stripe, he would be able to cure all ailments and become superhuman god of the universe. Now, we all know that's insane, but Charlie obviously did not. What we have here is the silverback gorilla. He has survived and he has been captured, and we've put nodes on top of his head in order to understand a rudimentary form of what he's trying to say. Now, we have the silverback here, and let's just see how the machine works. Now. Silverback, how did you feel when Mr. Sheen tried to steal your silver stripe? My stripe is mine. Oh, it's working very well. This is good. Stripe is his, I understand. So you feel like it is your stripe and it gives you the strength to be the superhuman power of the... Oh, I'm sorry. Super ape power of the world. <laughs> Apes will dominate the world. Oh, isn't he cute, Potter? What a nice little ape. What a nice little gorilla ape. Your arrogance will be your downfall. Oh, he even knows big words like arrogance, Potter. It's really quite hilarious. Oh, how are you feeling that cage in there? Do you want a banana, buddy? You laugh now, but you will cry later. Oh, I, I, there must be something wrong with the machine. He seems to, Let me bring the trainer over here. He, trainer, uh, this is Dan Johnson. He's been training this silverback gorilla. Or should I say, taking care of him for the past eight years he's been in captivity. Now, could you tell us why he would say something like he wants me to cry? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, he don't like people poking at his belly and trying to take his hair. So, you know, he wants to pay you back and rip your arms off. Oh, he, he's gonna, he's he'll gonna rip, rip your arms off from limb to limb and he'll shove them in your neck. Well, then why hasn't he ever done that to you? Why haven't you ever done that to him? Banana. Banana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, satiate them with a bushel of bananas every day. Keeps them quiet. That's how Charlie got in there to try to get the eye on them. Was hey, uh, you take some bananas, gorilla. Lasagna, and lasagna. He likes lasagna too, but oh, that's more like, for dessert. Then. He's like a Garfield ape. He's like a Garfield gorilla. Hey, a banana a day keeps the gorilla attacks away, I guess, Potter. <laughs> well, is there any last words you'd like to say, you cute little gorilla? Anything you want to say to Charlie Sheen or to the world? I am not a cartoon. The threat is real. Apes will rule. Oh, okay, well, back to you, Potter. Oh, come here, come here. Wow, I didn't know that. That gorilla's had those kind of aspirations, and, and I sure as heck didn't know that that was going to happen to you. Well, nonetheless, well, thank you all for tuning in to Win World Local News on Mile High Sports Radio. I am Potter Smits, and stay tuned for Community Court next on the World Improv Network. Give the WinCast your suggestions via Facebook, Twitter, or by calling into the Mile High Sports Radio studio line during the break for a case that needs to be tackled during community court. Next on Mile High Sports Radio.